Hello everybody, Silver Picker here, and welcome to the Silver Picker Squad. Now, today's video is another fan request, another fan favorite. Of course, we are doing yet again another themed grab bag from Main Street Rare Coins. You guys love watching them, I love making them, it's a match made in heaven. And as you know, I love Main Street Rare Coins, they are the best eBay grab bag seller I have ever encountered. In fact, the only one to date that has been truly honest and given well over the value that you pay. I like promoting them to you because it gives you guys a good opportunity to buy a fair coin grab bag, and I like promoting them because it supports honest sellers. So it is also a match made in heaven. So if you like this video and you like these kind of videos, I would love if you'd take a moment to just hit the like button. It'll help the algorithm boost my videos to more people, giving me the opportunity to make even more videos with bigger and bigger grab bags. So, for those of you guys who are new, this is a coin grab bag from an eBay seller called Main Street Rare Coins. They're a small local coin shop out of Jewett City, Connecticut, and I paid $100 for this grab bag, and what we're gonna do is see if the grab bag's contents are worth more than $100 and whether it was worth spending my money on. So, in any case, enough with the jibber jabber, let's crack into this and see what we got. All right, here we go. Let's check this out. Oh boy, oh boy, here we go. Check this out. Ho oh, ho, yes! Look at that. Olympic and first year issue coins. I guess we know what the theme is this time. Let's check this out. Oh boy. As usual, we've got an awesome looking bag with the iconic grab bag. Signature on the back, you know it's legit. Check that out. Olympic and first year issue coins. This is gonna be really cool. Uh, I definitely have seen a bunch of Olympic themed coins in the past, but who knows what'll be in here. Let's check it out. Oh boy, I, uh, I can hardly wait. All right, first things first. All right, it looks like the first thing we got are some stamps. Four states pre-canceled. This one says Leo Minster, Massachusetts, Burlington, New Jersey, Westchester, or Winchester, Tennessee, and Hartford, Connecticut. Interesting, it says it's $4, we shall see about that. As you all know, we are going to track the value right down here and see if we hit the $100 mark. All right, next up, let's see what we got. Ooh, America's first medals. Let's see what we got over here. Oh, hey now. Looks like it says something Howard Legion's Petitum Praefecto, Comita Americana. And there's a year down there. It says Reproduction 1881. So I guess this is some kind of reproduced coin and it has what looks like some Latin on the reverse. Can't tell if this is silver. Let's see if the edge has any indication of whether it's silver or not. Sometimes the edge will have the marking. Nothing right now. Let's check out our little COA. At least it'll give us some information. Lieutenant Colonel John E. Howard is honored on the 7th in the U.S. Mint's 10-piece series of pewter reproductions of America's first medals. Okay, so this is a pewter coin. I am not a collector of pewter coins, but this is actually pretty beautiful. I really do like this. Not too shabby at all. See, that's the beauty I always say about these, uh, about these grab bags, is that you get stuff that you wouldn't normally purchase yourself, but are very happy to have once you got them. Nice. All right, let's dive back in. Next item, let's see what we got. Ah, business card. If you guys are interested in purchasing something from these fine folks, you can contact them right here. Awesome. Next item, oh, this is a good one, I can already tell. Oh yeah. 1971 Eisenhower uncirculated silver dollar. How about that? That is sweet. First year of issue. Envelope's all beat up, but that's okay. All right, look at that. Got the little tab here saying Eisenhower uncirculated silver dollar. And check that out. 
1971S. Now, for those of you who are new to coin collecting, don't get too excited when you see you have a bunch of these hidden in a drawer somewhere. Only some of these are silver, not all of them. This one in particular is a 40% silver dollar, but a lot of the ones that were meant for just general circulation are indeed clad, meaning they contain no silver. Still really, really cool. All right, let's put this aside. That's a nice one. All right, let's go back into the bag and see what we got. A lot of flat items, a lot of big flat items. All right. Look at that, 1932 Olympic Games first day cover. That is so cool. You can see the stamp, a first day cover is the first day that a certain stamp is issued. Really cool, look at that. This one says it's $22, that I don't know, but we'll see soon enough down here. So you can see here that this one was sent to this guy, uh, Anthony Giorgio in Hartford, Connecticut, probably in 1932. You can see right there, 1932. 1936, of course, is the infamous uh, Olympics that were in Germany, Nazi Germany, and Jesse Owens and all that. So, just four years later. Back into the gift that just keeps on giving. Let's see what we got here. Okay, this is a certificate of authenticity. It's a meteorite. I assume that means we will be getting a meteorite in here somewhere. Let's see if we can find that. Well, you know, it'll come out when it comes out. Oh boy. What on earth is this? Patent, February 13, 1912, USA Utility Scale. All right, I guess we're getting a little utility scale. Very cool. See, that's one of the things that I love about Main Street Rare Coins is you get a lot of non-numismatic stuff, or exonumia, as uh, some might call it. So this is a scale. You put it on one end, and then it stretches down, and it should have markings on it. Let's see if we can see them. Yep. So when the weight gets pulled down, it's tough to see because it's a little bit dark, but there are little notches on here on this dark part that show the measurements so you can see how heavy something is. It's kind of like a modern day luggage weigher. You just put your luggage on one end, hang the hook up, and see what kind of pressure it exerts. Really cool. So this is from 1912. All right, next up, let's see what we got. Okay, I think this is based on their usual thing. I think this is actually just wrapping that used to have the uh, wheat scent roll that they always include in it, but still cool. Distillery warehouse stamp. Wow. I mean, it's pretty beat up, but I guess this is some kind of tax stamp for distilleries from back in the day. Yeah, it's marked 1878. Distillery warehouse stamp. That is pretty cool. Even though I think this is just meant to be wrapping paper, it is still really, really cool. But you can see deep down in here, there's a ton of coins sitting at the bottom, which we have not yet gotten to yet, but I see a slabbed coin. Let's check that guy out. Oh, this is not a coin. You guys might recognize this from the video I did where I did the three-way competition between me, Silver Seeker, and Rob Finds Treasure. They each got one of these and I didn't, and this is so cool. This is a little piece of meteor. You can see here it says, Authentic Meteorite, Space Rock, Campo del Cielo, Argentina. Discovered 1576 AD. Wow, it's less than 0.1 grams, but it is still really cool. This thing used to be hurtling through outer space. So I guess we've got ourselves our certificate of authenticity now, which of course is meaningless. I mean, this is just a photocopied piece of paper. But in any case, aside from the fact this is INB, which is a total BS uh, numismatic grading company, and the case is cracked actually, but this is still really, really cool. Not a coin, but definitely cool. All right, I mean, so far we've actually only gotten one coin in this coin grab bag, but hey, this is still really cool stuff. Uh, I did tell them to surprise me. Okay, here we go. All right, we got ourselves another quote-unquote unsearched wheat scent roll, 1909 and 1958. I love when they put unsearched in quotes. Of course, they always put these with really nice coins inside. And as usual, I will save this for my Patreon video. So if you're interested in becoming a patron, you can unlock all of my Patreon-only videos and see what is inside this roll. All right, next up, let's take a look at this. All right, first day of issue, 1994, for figure skating. Can't say this is my favorite. It's not my favorite sport, not my favorite hobby. But hey, as I've said in the past, my dad is a stamp guy, so I will give these all to my dad. Looks like we got some more stamp stuff. 
More first day covers. Now this one my dad will definitely like. My dad is a huge baseball fan, and although I can't say he watches much women's softball, I think he'll still get a kick out of this. We've got Equestrian. So this is cool. This is like different Olympics. Yes, yes. Okay, so it's Olympic first day of issue. We got ourselves the USA Olympic team, 1996. And it looks like we've got two more in here as well. Women's running and women's sailboarding. I can't say that this is really my favorite type of stuff. I'm not into any of these sports, and to be totally honest, I don't even really like the design of these, but in any case, I will give them to my dad and he will either sell them or put them in his collection. All right, we're getting down to the heavier stuff. Got a lot of coins in there, but let's check this one out. Ooh, okay. This one I really, really like. Sponsored by the Society of Israel Philatelists, Philately is the sort of study of stamps, just like numismatics is the study of coins. And here we have June 15th, 11 a.m., 1958. I can't believe they even have the hour on here, but that is really cool. This is the philatelic exhibition in honor of the 10th anniversary of the State of Israel. State of Israel was founded in 1948, and here is 10 years later, and we have Religious freedom in America as the stamp. All right, we're getting to the bottom of the bag, but there's still a lot of weight in here, so I think we're gonna have some good stuff. All right, and hey, I mean, for all of us coin collectors, where are the coins? Oh boy, here's one. Here's one. Wow, that is nice. It has a little $30 price tag on there. I don't know if that's right, but look at that. 1988 Olympic coins, wow. Olympiad Liberty. I love that. That's the passing of the Olympic torch, 1988. This is indeed a silver coin. So $1 silver commemorative. Really nice. I love these wreaths on the side. I think they must be olive leaves. I'm not 100% sure, but it sort of looks that way. And it would make sense because the idea of the Olympics is to promote peace and, and all sorts of harmony between nations friendly competition instead of war. This is really nice. This is a nice chunk of silver too. This is so far my favorite thing we've gotten in the box. This is fantastic. All right, back in we go. Let's see what else we got. Got ourselves an antique skeleton key. Silver Seeker and Rob Finds Treasure each got one of these. I guess uh, Deanna and John saw that I was jealous in the previous video and included this and the meteorite in uh, this grab bag. Very cool. All right, next up, got ourselves. Yes, I love obsolete currency and coins. This is awesome, an 1864 two cent coin. I bet many of you watching did not even know that the United States used to have a two cent coin. All right, I'm gonna pop this out because this is too hard to see and I want you guys to get a chance to really enjoy it and see what it looks like. It's definitely dark. It's definitely not a great condition one, but I do love, like I said, I love, love, love all the obsolete coinage. Okay, I turned on some more lights in here, and even though that does increase the shadows in the video, this is a much better look at this coin. So this is the two cent coin, take two. Look at that, and this is actually not in bad shape. This might actually replace the one that I currently have in my US typeset. If it does, I will update you guys in my Patreon video, like I usually do. Nice, look at that. All right, let's see what else we got in here. Okay, we got a pin. I assume, I assume this is going to be a, an Olympic pin. Olympic Bob Run, that is super cool. Anyone else that grew up in the 90s watching cool runnings on the Sunday morning movie on WB? Oh my gosh, that brings back memories. This is super cool. This is really, really cool, actually. I don't care that it has nothing to do with coins, but very, very cool. Hit me up in the comments, by the way, if you like this kind of mix of non-numismatic things with numismatic things, or if you're just all about the coins. Let me know if you would have been happy with this, or if you'd say, look, I wanted a coin grab bag, and this has a lot of non-coin related stuff. Let me know your opinion. All right. Oh, nice, this is beautiful, look at this. You see this beautiful rainbow toning? It's only slight, but it is really nice. So this is a 1916, they have it as an XF. I think that that's probably pretty accurate on this grade. Not worth 10 bucks in my opinion, but still, that is a really, really nice mercury dime. 
Really nice Mercury Dime. I love the toning on this. I mean, a toned coin to me is like the ultimate. I love, love, love toned coins. I know some people don't care and some people are actually not into them, but for me, I think that they're really nice. Okay, I feel we've got another three or four coins in the bag. Wow, this is really, really cool. So this is a first year of issue. I get it now. The theme is first year of issue and Olympics. So first year of issue both with stamps and with coins and of course the Olympics. So it's, I guess it's like a sort of a dual theme grab bag. But what's really cool about this, and many of you may not know this, but in the first couple of years of issue of the Indian Head Scent, they actually used a different metal than what they used for the rest of the series. So I believe that this is bronze instead of copper. And what that means is that it is actually a slightly different color. You can see it's almost a, go a golden color compared to what you'd normally see from a regular Indian Head scent. And on top of that, they're actually quite a bit thicker. Now, I already have one of these in my US typeset, but this is the kind of coin that you would want to get in a grab bag like this because this would go right into your typeset. Very, very cool. I definitely like that. All right, I can feel that there are three more coins in here. So we are actually getting to the coins just at the end. Yes, look at this. An 1819 large scent? Yes, please. That is super, super cool. And it's in AG condition. I think this could even be better than AG. This looks excellent. Ah, okay, so it's got some damage on the reverse, but still, I'm much, much more concerned usually with the eye appeal of the obverse of my coins than the reverse, because that's how they're presented in the album. This almost definitely will replace a coin in my US typeset, and of course I will show that, like I said, in my Patreon only video. Look at that, super, super cool. This has overtaken this as my favorite coin in the set. Definitely, definitely appreciate that, thank you. All right, we got our last two. Let's see what we got. One comes out and it is, this is an 1883 Liberty Nickel. Man, I love these first year of issue coins because they always have a nice story to them. This one, you guys may know, I might do a whole video on the history of this because there is so much to talk about with this coin. But this 1883 Liberty V Nickel is called a V Nickel because it has a V on the back. Now, any of you who did your elementary school math would know that V is five in Roman numerals. And the government figured that everybody knew that, so they would know that this is a nickel. But what do you notice is not present on this coin? It doesn't say the word cents. So what happened is there's these criminals that would gold plate this back in 1883, and because there was no internet, and there was no TV and no radio, word traveled much slower, so they would gold plate this and tell people that it was the new $5 coin and people just didn't know any better and they got ripped off. So they added the word cents in all following years. So this is really cool. This also is in better condition than my 1883 Liberty V nickel. So this will also be replacing uh, what I have in my typeset. Really awesome. Okay, you guys are really killing it at the end of this video. I am so, so excited about all these coins. All right, and we've got our last one, our very last one. Can it bring us home and take us over $100? Let's see. Oh, indeed it does. This is a heavy hitter. This is a flying eagle scent, and it ain't in too bad shape either, 1857. Look at that. So right between the large scents and the Indian head scents was this short-lived flying eagle scent. And you can see it says one scent on the reverse, very similar reverse to the Indian head scent. And I know I keep calling it the Indian head scent, but that's because habits are hard to break, but we really should be calling it something else like the Native American design scent or something like that, just to be a little bit more respectful to uh, First Nations and Native Americans that may be watching. So in any case, this is a really, really nice coin. I'm gonna have to check and see if it is in indeed better shape or not than what's in my current typeset. But I have, a I have a pretty good feeling that a bunch of these type coins are actually going to replace stuff that's in my current typeset. Man, we are done here. We are out of coins, we are out of stamps, we are out of all these cool relics. But look at that, this is not a bad display. Definitely $100 well spent. 
And the coins, they may have been fewer than previous grab bags, but they are heavy hitters. That is for sure. So tell me again, now that you've seen the rest of this, I'll ask the question again. Would you guys be happy with getting this for a hundred bucks? And are you happy with the amount of coins versus stamps and other non-coin related stuff? Or would you say, I really just would have rather had a couple more coins? In any case, I really, really enjoyed opening this and yet again, another smash success from Main Street Rare Coins. Woo wee, not a bad haul if I may say so myself. You guys know how much I love getting these grab bags from Main Street Rare Coins. John and Deanna, the owners, they're salt of the earth people. They are truly honest coin dealers and I love working with them. And it's just been so awesome buying coins from them and actually getting good stuff. And this one did not disappoint. It got me a lot of stuff that I've never seen before, a lot of stuff that I collect, and a lot of stuff that I don't collect that I can trade away for other stuff. So if you guys like this video, I would love if you'd consider hitting the like button and helping out the channel. And if you're a first time viewer or if you've been watching for a long time but haven't yet hit that subscribe button, now's the time. I would love it if you would hit that subscribe button and I would love you if you would hit that subscribe button. So give it a shot. If you want to support the channel in a more tangible way, you can get yourself an awesome t-shirt or hoodie like this one and you can get some sweet merch or you can become a patron on my Patreon campaign. Supporting my Patreon campaign helps me make awesome videos, helps with production costs, and it lets you into my exclusive Discord server, which is essentially this amazing private chat room with me and the other patrons, and we talk about precious metals, we talk about coin collecting strategies, and we even share gold and silver deals, and honestly, it's just a barrel of laughs. We have a lot of fun. So I hope to see you there. I really hope you enjoyed this video. I've got a lot more awesome stuff coming down the pike, so stay tuned, and until then, Silver Picker out. A huge, huge thank you to all of my wonderful patrons and a huge welcome to my new patrons. Thank you all so much. This past week in the Discord has been such a blast getting to know all you guys. The conversations have been great and it's been so cool hearing about all your other hobbies. So if you're interested in becoming a patron and joining the Discord, I would love to see you all there.